We have our three final action research methods. We have witness statements, quantitative data, and finally qualitative data as well. Once again, we would like for you to, to write these uh, in your own words. The first key term is witness statement. Of course, as an action researcher, we can uh, often observe uh, what is happening within our own classroom, of course. However, other researchers, okay, might uh, want to observe, okay, um, our assessment and they can write up a witness statement. So this could be another person, a qualified assessor, is going to be observing and providing a report on what they see. Okay, it's a very much a time efficient method. Um, if you have to conduct a series of observations, you can delegate perhaps another um, action researcher, another member of staff to observe uh, candidates or fellow learners as well. It does promote authenticity and it promotes the responsibility of the observer. So you're giving responsibility uh, to an observer to conduct uh, an observation report. Some of the limitations is standardisation of witness statements. So you have to ensure that you and your fellow observers are very much on par with each other on what is to be observed and the quality of uh, assessing as well. So you just need to make sure that your instructions are the same. And it's very much down to the opinion of the witness as well. So you might not be there in person, you have to take their, their word and their professional judgment uh, for it. But as I said, it's a fantastic way of reducing the amount of time uh, spent on an action research project and observations. Our next key term is quantitative data. Okay, so this is data, this is numbers. Okay, lots of analysis can be uh, formulated from all of this data. So percentages, uh, graphs and tables can be produced uh, following this method of, of data. So it's easy to store and analyse data. It can be presented, of course, to heads of departments, okay, with quantitative data. And especially at the end of a course or programme, when course leaders and managers want to know about results, you can, of course, provide that rich data uh, to them. Some of the limitations of quantitative data are that opinions are often overlooked, okay? Numbers can be misleading, okay? And finally, mistakes can happen when analysing data as well. So we need to be mindful of that, okay? But if you're looking to present uh, in graphs and tables, bar charts, quantitative data is a fantastic method for that. Our final uh, method is uh, qualitative data. Um, this is very much looking at the opinions, the thoughts, um, of the learners or candidates, okay? So you could be writing up um, the opinions about what learners uh, say, okay? So it provides lots of depth and detail uh, about the learners' opinions and responses, okay? It allows for that human side, so uh, the learner is not treated um, as a number. They can provide their thoughts, their feelings um, on the action research project. Furthermore, it can be difficult to analyse all data and responses, so incredibly time consuming to, to write up all learners' thoughts and opinions. It must be quite hard to analyse and put all of those opinions uh, into graphs and data as well. So once again, for, for this section of the assignment, we would like for you to describe in your own words the, the three different methods here. And we're looking for a minimum of two strengths and two limitations. So you can, of course, um, expand on the strengths and limitations provided.